This application is a two-sided thermal. We're going to put a gloss on top and a satin film on the bottom. That way, if a customer comes in and asks you uh, to have a different finish, you can offer them both without having to unweb the machine and put a different film on and then go back and forth for different types. So the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I actually did, was I warmed my machine up to 220 degrees. We're going to run a 5 mil film today that has a heat activation range between 185 and 230 degrees. So I'm going to run it at 220. Now, first thing I'll do is I will remove my safety shield, remove my film supply shafts, top and bottom, and for easy access to the rollers, I will remove my feed tray. Down here is the bottom idler bar, so I'm going to drop that down so when we get ready to load that bottom roll of film on there, we can have easy access to it. There are two types of films, thermal films, that have uh, what's called poly-in or poly-out, and that is where the adhesive is located. This is known as a poly-in, which has the adhesive on the inside of the roll. The outside is the actual film itself. So when I load this on the machine, I'm going to have this so that it's unrolling from the bottom. The other type of film is called poly-out, and that is the film will be on the inside and the ad adhesive is on the outside. With that film, you, when you put it on the machine, it's going to unroll from the top. But these are both poly ends, so we're going to load these on so that they do come from the bottom. So I'm going to load my gloss on top and then my satin on the bottom. So the shaft is going to fit on the machine this way, so it's important that I orient the, the roll of film to fit this properly. I've already set my core adapters to the certain width that I want to use. And again, I'm going to check my film, make sure I'm loading this properly. I will set this down. This is the end of the shaft that's going to go on the left side, so I want to make sure that I do this properly. to get that centered as much as possible. And then I'm going to take it over to the machine and put it in place. Like that. There are little knurled thumb knobs back here that I'll tighten down to make sure that that shaft doesn't move on us. I will do the same thing with the bottom. I know the shaft is going to go on this way because I'm keeping my brakes, my brake adjustments oriented to the left side of my machine. Again, checking to make sure that it's coming off the correct side. Lock those in place. Now, with 
thermal films, you want to keep your edges lined up with each other as much as possible because what happens is with the thermal film, once this adhesive activates, it turns into a liquid state and you get what's called ooze out. So the pressure will force some of the adhesive out to the sides of the of the film roll itself. And you want to make sure that you've got as, as little adhesive making contact with the roller as possible. So I'll bring this top roll of film down and look at the edges. And that is pretty good right there. All right. Now, I, I have these lined up, so I'm going to add a little bit of brake tension to these because I don't want these free f spinning on me while I'm trying to do the thread threading. So I'll add a little bit of brake to the top and I f f I'm just turning this to feel that resistance. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom. I want these to be as close as possible during this process. We'll fine tune it once we start the, the, uh, the actual lamination. And the reason why you want to do that is if your brake tension is uneven from top to bottom, whichever t it's tightest, that's going to cause the finished product to curl. So if I had more brake on the top than I do on the bottom, everything that comes out the backside is going to curl up. If I have more brake on the bottom than the top, everything that comes out is going to curl down. So you want to get this as level as possible so that you have a nice flat finish. And that's pretty good to start right there. Now, I'll take the bottom film and I'm going to go back behind this idler bar once I get it behind that idler bar then I'm going to put the bar back in place Pull this up, like this, let it drape over that, push this bar back up in place so it's locked up in the J-channel. Take up my excess. I'm going to take the bottom, or the top roll of film, bring this down and go underneath this idler bar let that sit like this. So now I'm going to take a sheet of paper. I'm going to use this as a threading card. I'll bring it over to the machine. I'm going to start it into the rollers so that I have it going through the heat and the pull rollers. So basically at this point the machine is threaded. So what I'll do is line that up. Now I'll bring the top roll of film down. Let it rest on, those, on that top heat roller, just like this. I will bring the paper up. Tack that right to the exposed adhesive, like this. bring my bottom roll of film up and tack that to the top roll of film. I'll go ahead and close my roller and use my foot pedal to get it started through.
Once that's started through the machine, I'm going to go ahead and stop it and I'm going to do what's called burping. So I've got that going through. You can see I have all these rivers and wrinkles and everything up here. So I'll just come around to the back side, grab the web that I've started through, and I'll pull it for a little bit. And it needs a little bit more. So at this point, now I'm going to come in and start making some brake adjustments. So close the roller down. I'll go ahead and start this again. Now you can see we still have, we have some rivers and some wrinkles going on here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of brake. Now, you'll see we still have some going here. Once we get down close to the nip area, that's where we want to see all of that disappear. It's okay to have a little bit up here as long as it's not going into the nip area itself. So we have to do one more test really quick here. I'm going to put the feed tray in place. And what I want to do is just verify that I have my brake set properly. So I'm going to take a piece of paper, put a line on it, I'm going to run that into the machine. Once this comes out the back side, I'm going to cut that out. The reason I put that line on there is so that I know which is top and which is bottom. Now it's important that you cut this completely out of the web. Now, if I got those brakes adjusted properly, we're going to have a nice flat output. So I'll flip it over and we have good output. Now, there is a condition that is inherent in a lot of polyester films and that's called canoeing. And what you'll see is opposite corners curling up. So if I see it coming out like this, or I see it like this, that's, there's nothing you can do about that. That's, that's an inherent issue in the polyester, and you can adjust your brakes all day and you're never going to get that out. But that's what we're looking for, nice flat output right there. So I'm going to run a couple of posters. I'll run one face up and I'm going to run one face down so that you can see the difference between the gloss film and the, the luster. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn my cooling fans on for this. Typically, 
Thicker films need to be run at slower speeds because they absorb more heat out of the rollers than the thinner films do. Also, if there's a lot of heavy ink coverage, that will also pull more heat out of the rollers. So if you look at this, you can see the difference between the gloss and the luster. Okay, so the last thing we want to check before we start our job is we want to make sure that we have the right temperature for our product and our adhesive. So I'm going to do what's called an X test. And that's where we take that sheet that we just laminated and I'm going to take my blade. I'm going to cut an X into it. I'm going to peel back a section. Then I'm going to peel this and we're pulling fiber, so that means we have the proper temperature for this job.